Welcome back to Pete's Workshop. So today we're talking about the 2.0 TSI rattle in the turbo wastegate. There's a bush that just gets worn out. All over the world, thousands of these complete turbocharger assemblies, multiple thousands of dollars, have been replaced just because of a worn out bush. I don't like that. I'm gonna fix mine and I'm gonna show you how I fixed it. The fact is that these turbochargers, from what I can tell, don't fail. The wastegate fails because there's nothing wrong with this turbocharger assembly, just the wastegate. So this is the turbocharger assembly that I bought just off eBay, uh, supposedly off a Mark VI Golf GTI with about 133,000 Ks, I think. Seems to be in pretty good nick. Um, turbine wheel looks fine doesn't have any play in that at all so that seems pretty good but it does have the old wastegate um, rattle and that's more than likely why it was replaced so that's what I'm going to go about replacing I've bought this which is a wastegate repair kit comes in three pieces but obviously you've got the wastegate and the flapper you've got the bush which pushes into the housing and then once you get that in you weld the top section back on so the tricky bit is going to be getting that old bush out um, but you can see here there's actually a hole and inside there there is a roll pin which needs to come out so i've just been trying to work out how i can get that roll pin out just gone to my old drill Bit set. It's a good way of finding um, diameters of holes. So this is a three mil drill bit. So that hole's just a little bit bigger than three mil or pretty close to three mil. It's going in that hole that far, which is about 10 millimeters before it's touching the roll pin. Go down now to 1.5 mil. Then I can center that and that actually goes into the roll pin. So at least we know now how long that roll pin is. Obviously it's blind. There's no hole on the other side, so you can't push it from the other side. I think the only thing I can do is actually just drill that out, the three mil drill bit. So the next step will be just to grind this off and lift off this part of the lever assembly. Then I can look at how I'm gonna push that bearing out. Um, but the next thing I need to do is just work out where this actually needs to be. Not super critical. You can see the hole is also elongated and flogged out. The wastegate actuator is also very worn and flogged out as well. There's no designed adjustment, but there's nothing stopping us filing those out to give us a little bit of adjustment. Stay tuned, I come up with a much better solution for adjustment. This needs to be just not quite parallel to the flange itself, as you can see. I'm just going to see if I've ground it deep enough. It should come off relatively easy. Okay, so we can see definitely that that's starting to deform around here. see the layer on that it's amazing so now it's a good time just to compare these side by side diameter of the wheel it's about a mil and a half bigger uh, looks a little bit fatter as well don't see any issues with that really the way it's way it works looks pretty good what about these numbers how do they compare 
You see those numbers on there? And the numbers on the wheel itself. The flapper. You see the construction's exactly the same. Looks like the same thickness material. Drill to there. If I use that as a measure on that far. So almost all the way past the center. Well, it's definitely past the center point. So in theory, that should be enough. Obviously this has been pushed in from the top. It must have a ring cut in it that that roll pin went through as well. So I'm not just gonna try and beat on this too much. I think I'm better off making a bit of a puller so that I can try and actually pull it through in the same direction that it came. So I'll take some measurements and see what I can make up. Some penetrating oil started on that. And we might give it a bit of heat as well. So I found myself a bolt, which should, looks like it should do the trick, at least part of the way. At least I can test it to see if it can get started. Just need another washer. So I just need something a bit deeper there because that's now bottoming out in the bottom of the socket. No special tools, that was just a standard 8mm bolt. Started off with an 80mm, ended up then adding a spacer to give me a bit more because I kept on running out of nut to hold on to under here. Then right at the end, just a slide hammer, popped that out. So we can now compare the new one to that. Tiny bit longer. Should be fine though. So I've had the bush in the freezer overnight. I'm just gonna heat this up and uh, then we'll grab the frozen bush and see how we go at slipping it in. <laughs> Pretty frosty.
that one more millimeter. Show you what I'm looking at here. So I'm just seeing how central centralized that is. It's actually not bad at all, actually. I think that's pretty good. Considering there needs to be a little bit of plain at anyway. Uh, I think that's uh, that's excellent. And uh, once this is in position, I can just drill straight through there and then put another roll pin in. Always, always drill with lube. Got some roll pins just from a local parts supplier, Repco, an assortment of pins there. There should be a couple of three millimeter ones. The one that was originally in here was only about 12 mil off. Just gonna take about five mil off it and make things much easier. And that's home. This is the wastegate actuator point that pushes on the wastegate flapper arm. You can see the amount of wear on that. I'm just going to look at how I might be able to make this better uh, than what it was, or at least try and fix what we've got there. Because obviously it's just going to keep wearing, but more than likely we could do something better. This is what I found from Turbo Smart an adjustable clevis pin with an internal thread. Almost perfect for the job. According to the website, these are available with an internal M6 thread. However, I couldn't get those, so I had to get the quarter inch UNF. That was fine. I thought I could get a button die and that I'd be able to put the right thread on the push rod to suit that. Apparently, that wasn't so easy. I just couldn't get a quarter inch UNF button die locally. So then I just tapped out the internal thread to M6 and went metric all the way. It worked a treat. making sure I've got enough thread to add a lock nut in front of that. Okay, getting this ready to weld now. So I've just got a Stanley knife blade in there as a spacer between the bottom of the bush and the actual wastegate arm and then on top I'm just putting a piece of paper I know it's going to catch on fire but as a spacer um, I'm just going to use that so I can tack that in place and then it'll easily come out as well so that's the plan um, I've got a clamp there holding that in place as well so the wastegate is shut and I'm just trying to get this parallel to that exhaust outlet housing so that's the plan hold that parallel tack it in place and then weld around the shaft there so I've just got that tacked a couple of places on the top I'm happy with its position and just I've got that much play, just the thickness of a Stanley knife blade. I think that will be fine. So now I can just proceed and continue welding that up nicely. So since this normally has no adjustment on it, there's no real instructions on how to set this up that I can actually find. Definitely on other turbochargers, you actually want to put some preload on it. However, this one is, because it's sprung in this direction, 
you can't really put any preload on in that direction. So what I've done is, uh, let's have a look. So if I move that one turn, pop that in, then it's actually a little bit too loose. I don't want it that loose. So what I've done is just pull it out, just go one complete turn, and then I can still manage to get that in there nicely, but now it's tight enough. It's actually got a little bit of preload on that. So I can lock that off now, and um, that's how I'm gonna run it. This is the turbocharger I just pulled off the GTI. It's actually, when you look at it, surprising that it made any boost at all. I mean, we did get occasionally a low boost error, but man, look at how much play this has got. It's crazy. So that is a 200,000 kilometer turbo. Otherwise, the shaft play seems fine. Everything else seems fine. Getting the turbo in without removing a lot of stuff is very difficult. But what I did find is the selector cable here for the DSG transmission. I've removed the bracket from here and the, the clip that goes on to the selector as well. And that allows you to move this a long way over here out of the way and probably a good idea to wire that back just to give you plenty of room so it doesn't keep flicking across um, but that gives plenty of room to get the turbo in the other tip is leave off this engine mount because then you can pull the engine over quite a bit I've just got it on a block of wood underneath on a jack so that allows that quite a bit of movement there. Of course, that's not the first time I've done it. It's about the 10th time I've done that, so I've kind of finally worked out the best way to approach that. 